So today we are talking about something that I think I, I, I have experienced much in my life and I would prefer that you tell the topic because I don't want to, I don't want to give it away improperly. So Nick, what are we talking about today? So today we are going to talk about projecting and deflecting. Um, But before we do that, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, My name is Nick Dubay and I work at NAMI Champlain Valley here in the beautiful Cicada Field, (laughs) Plattsburgh, New York. And I, I myself, I'm on a journey to increase our quality of life through mental health. Now, you can follow me at mhsg.org or by searching for the Mental Health Survival Guide on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter, as well as find me here at 1115 every week, every Monday on Z1063. Yay! So. I, sh- I should let you just come in and do th- be on this side, and I'll be on the other side. You're doing a better job at this than I am today. <laughs> well, you know, good grief! It's a, it's important to me. I love I love my month starting out my Mondays in a good way. So, um, so today we're talking about projecting and deflecting. Um, projecting is something that you might be familiar with. Um, so, first, I, I got a question, a couple questions for you, Amanda. Have you ever found yourself assuming? someone else's feelings or accusing them of doing something terrible when you have zero evidence? Uh, only on days that end in Y. Okay, great. How about, have you ever done something or had something happen and your concern and thoughts go directly to how you know someone is going to react? I would like to also say only on days that end in Y. Oh, perfect. Well, um, that could be the product of a few stress-related mental health problems, and it's commonly what professionals call call psychological projection. Okay. And this was a term developed by a famous Austrian man named Sigmund Freud. Ah. Now, actually, some people actually call this term Freudian projection. Okay. And the reason is because Freud noticed during some of his sessions with patients that they would sometimes accuse others of having the same feelings they themselves were demonstrating. So that's a simple explanation. Okay. So you're probably asking, why do we project our feelings onto other people? Well, put super simply, I would say that it's a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. You know, survival is a big, big thing for me. Um, We shape our our perceptions that others feel a certain way so that we can prepare ourselves for battle. Yes. Um, Often, the outcome is not as bad as what we thought it would be, but at least we were prepared, right? Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that, Amanda? As somebody who is a survivor of childhood trauma, I would say that my hypervigilant is what keeps me prepared for battle every day. Right. So (laughs) it is a survival, it's it's a survival mechanism. Now, another way to describe um, psychological um, pr- projection would be a defense mechanism. Um, but, uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about projection. So the reason why this is a complicated issue is, as humans, we are bad at expressing our emotions. Mm. And sometimes we fear what, uh, that when we do express our emotions, the outcome will be negative. And that's totally understandable because... Expressing our emotions might not lead us to physical danger most of the time, but it can lead us to what I like to call social danger. Ooh. And that's the fear of no longer being in control of the world that's around you, you know, being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess another way, instead of a survival mechanism, you could call this a defense technique or a defense mechanism. And other defense mechanisms that we use with projection are dissociation, passive aggression, distortion, um, and denial. All of these can be used to deflect and attempt to control undesirable emotions. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Wow. Did you actually, did you uh, put a, a, a probe in my brain this morning? Is that where you're getting on? <laughs> I, I think so. Maybe that's, maybe that's how this all came to me. Oh, yeah. um, so, as you know, when we're forced to dealing with painful emotions, I would, a good way to describe the physical equivalent for some people might be similar to being shot by an arrow. 
you know how, like, you ever see, like, those old fantasy movies or if you watch, like, Lord of the Rings and somebody gets an arrow that's being volleyed through the air, you know, they can see it coming and it's like, ah, no, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so here's my attempt at an analogy. So picture somebody standing in a field and arrows are being launched at this person. So to avoid being hit, they pick up a heavy shield in order to deflect the oncoming arrows. So... The shield, I would say, represents our defense mechanism. And I'm sure that most people who could protect themselves from being hit with an arrow would pick up that shield. Now, where this becomes a problem is when you spend far too much time carrying around that shield and you perceive that other people are launching arrows at you when, in their perspective, they are not. Does that make any sense? 100%. Oh, good. My analogies don't always stick, so here we go there. But see, I remember... I'm giving myself a high five right here. Well, you should, because remember, though, like, if if you're pitching it to this audience in particular for me, like, I am a a hack and slash RPG nerd, so I get that. I don't... And I can tell you, I'll I'll even carry it when uh, when I have to carry these heavy shields and I don't have enough mana. It makes it even worse. Perfect. Ah. You you totally got it. You out-nerded me a little bit right there. Wizard needs food badly. Sorry, sorry. So back back to the mental health world. Um, I could spend the whole day talking about RPG <laughs> stuff, but um, so I believe that we all have our moments of psychological projection or Freudian projection. But if you yourself are a family member or you are a loved one of somebody who struggles with this, it can actually be a really challenging life. For sure. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about how people who use gaslighting they often project. And if you are a victim of this, it can lead you to questioning your own sanity. Mm -hmm. So, how do we stop projecting and deflecting? Well, this is the time of the show every week where I remind all the listeners that I am not a doctor or a therapist, but I am someone who struggles with mental illness, and I am on a never-ending quest to improve my mental health and the health in the health of others around me. So if you are looking to improve your mental health, I suggest that you reach out to a mental health agency to begin your journey. And if you need help with that, feel free to give the fine folks here at NAMI Champlain Valley a call. It's, the number is 518-561-2685. That's 518-561-2685. So with that all said, here are a few things that I've learned about this topic. Now, first, if you or a loved one experiences projecting and deflecting often, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that most people are not fully aware of their survival mechanisms or their defense mechanisms. This does not mean, though, that you need to put up with abuse. It means that getting through to them and helping them change their behavior is going to be a challenge. So whenever possible, find professional support when working on yourself or with a loved one. This might require you to distance yourself a little bit, but don't give up because recovery is always possible. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it's, you know, it, it, the, the problem is when you get to the point where the shield is so heavy to carry, giving up seems like the best, even if you think the person might be worse, worth it. You have to remember to put yourself first. And maybe it's uh, time for you to split and, and take care of you. And maybe you can't let that person be a part. Maybe yeah. You can't be a part of that person's recovery. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and sometimes being with somebody um, might necessarily cause more harm than it actually can, can help them. So a little distance isn't always a bad thing. So second, the biggest step that I think that you can take when it comes to mental health and recovery is acknowledging that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to yourself and the people around you. If you feel like you are having uh, to be defensive and preventative when it comes to your emotions often, chances are you might not be in a good place in your life and a little self-reflection and a few changes might be needed in order to grow. Does that make sense? 100%. Perfect. All right. Third, feeling anger Jealousy, hurt, and stress is natural, but how you deal with these emotions is what shapes who you are. Sometimes pushing these feelings away when you're not ready to deal with them, that's actually okay. 
but being guarded so often and having to carry that shield can lead to negative outcomes in your relationship. So I think a good goal is to change the word projecting into processing. Oh. Does that make any sense to you? You know, it's it's kind of how you, I have a, my, one of, uh, a, a woman I considered my best friend for a very long time always would share with me stuff from her therapist. And her therapist said something is, it all, it, well, it revolves around how you tell the story to yourself. And I think if you, it's right. it, what the, the vocabulary that we use toward ourselves makes it better. Like projecting to me sounds just like verbal vomit, but processing to me just sounds like a more gentle, kind way to do that. You know what I mean? Right. Well, so, so projecting, projecting oftentimes in the story or the narrative of projecting, you're saying they did this. They did that. They want this. They want that. This is how they, they, they feel. This is what they do. But when it comes to processing, the, the, it's more of an inward focus. You're actually saying more like, well, um, this is how I feel because of this. And this is why I feel because of this. And, and these are the things I need to do in order to not feel so terrible when this happens again. Mm-hmm. That's processing. Mm-hmm. So, and lastly... Lastly, as far as advice goes, you are responsible for your own action. And this is my most important advice. So, Amanda, I, I, I'm going to do something I've never done on the show before. Uh-oh. I actually have a mantra that I repeat to myself when it comes to projection, and I'd like to share that with you today. Absolutely. So it has four lines, and in it I would like the listeners right now, if they're able to, and you to please repeat each line with me. So are you ready? I am. Okay, repeat after me. All right, first, I am not a mind reader. I am not a mind reader. Good. I cannot control how others act. I cannot control how others act. I am going to process these feelings and cause no harm. I'm going to process these feelings and cause no harm. I am going to be kind to myself and others. I am going to be kind to myself and others. Good job. Yay. That was perfect. Good. You did it. Now, unfortunately, like a lot of other mental health problems, there's no quick fix. And I know that my journey is not going to be the same as yours. However, I believe that working on your mental health is not only good for you, but it's good for the people around you. And through that, we can make this world a better place, even though it sounds a little corny. But, you know, like in any good RPG, it all starts with that one person, that normal person, given this great test task, and then they, they, they grind and they work themselves up to being an amazing hero. And that's what working on mental health means to me. Yeah. So. I think you're on your way, Amanda. I'm going to go smash some uh, some clay pots and get all kinds of gold and, and go on with my journey. That's what I'm going to do. Perfect. <laughs> I, I, I hope that that was. I hope that that's figurative. But uh, you know, uh, yeah, but if it's it not, is. then you know, it, it could be cathartic. So that's good. <laughs> I, uh, I'm reading this book and I, I, I'm going to share it with the, with the listeners. I don't know if you've ever read it or heard about it, but it's called The Tao of Fully Feeling. I believe the guy's name is Pete Walker or Paul Walker. If you're really interested in it, friends, I can get the name for you. But uh, it, it's, it's a lot of the things. It was like, he was saying that how cathartic it is to smash things, but he's like, make sure you wear eye protection. So if you are going out to smash clay pots after this show, be sure to wear eye protection so you don't get any, any cuts or nothing. So, But I'm not. Figuratively, though, I know that there's a lot of good things when I smash through stuff. So I, you know, sometimes those pots are just empty. So. Right, right, right. And again, you know, just rem- remind yourself that you are not a mind reader. You can't control how others act. And you're going to process your feelings, whether it involves smashing clay pots or not. <laughs> but you're just going to cause nobody harm. And you're going to choose to be kind to yourself and others. That's, that's the most important for me. Is I, I know I'm pretty okay with other people, but I am my own worst enemy, and I'm not kind to myself. I know that. Well, the, the worst villains in our stories are often ourselves. Ugh, ain't that the truth. <sighs> yep. So is there any, any, other, any other gems that you want to wanna share with the listeners before we wrap up today? Um, no, just thanks for listening, and, and, and please tune in next week. And, and also, if you have any questions or, or thoughts or suggestions on topics for me to talk about, 
uh, feel free to reach out to me or you can actually uh, message or get a hold of uh, Amanda and she can get those uh, suggestions to me because I always appreciate them. And thanks for listening. And remember that survival is so much more than just staying alive. As always, Nick, thank you so much once again. And you always manage to set my Monday off in a good way. And st- No problem. Thank you.